not all consensual spankings are created equal. In fact, in the BDSM lifestyle, we actually have six general spanking types that we're gonna discuss today. Before we get into our discussion on the six spanking styles within BDSM, I wanted to do another patron spotlight shout out to Optic Blue Photography and Mohari Arts for this beautiful, corset. You girls are absolutely a joy. I am so glad we found each other and any of you that would like to pick this up, I put the link in this video's description. Now for our discussion on consensual spanking, know this. I am not talking about minors. I am not talking about a parent disciplining their child, okay? No minors in kink. When I'm referring to spanking today, consensual spanking, it is in the context of to consenting adults using this as a form of play within their BDSM lifestyle or dynamic. And you'll find these styles of dynamics specifically in the terms of taken in hand or domestic discipline. These are often monogamous relationships, long-term marriages oftentimes, that include domestic discipline or a taken in hand dynamic in which there is punishment and discipline administered around very real aspects within the relationship and within what goes on in that couple's life to infuse better manners for both partners and to just keep a sense of order within their roles. Regardless of what style of dynamic you have or how you like to incorporate spanking into your play, it must always be done with full enthusiastic consent and i've said this time and time again and you know what it's time for a review what is the authentic definition of consent consent is not just a lack of no ladies and gentlemen boys and girls consent is actually defined as a completely mindful willing and uncoerced choice to say yes and the ability to revoke that yes at any time without fear of repercussions without fear of a breakup or abandonment or neglect or abuse or being given the cold shoulder or being ghosted etc no fear of repercussions non-manipulated non-coerced completely enthusiastic and no fear of repercussions that is the first thing whenever you're engaging in some consensual spanking within bdsm as in any act Consent is key, consent is mandatory. Consent is not just sexy, consent is fucking mandatory, okay? Especially when it comes to you physically putting your hands in a potentially violent way on another person. Consent and limits. Limits must always, always, always be discussed. And part of the limits when it comes to consensual spanking is what style of spanking are you looking for? Why do you desire this? And how do you want it to fit into your play? Now, before we jump into these six spanking styles, I wanted to tell you about some amazing content I've released this month just for this topic. Dethroned and Catharsis are September's new BDSM erotica stories, both featuring different styles of punishment for some hot as fuck examples you can use for your own spanking scene. I've also released a patron only video with my four steps to satisfying self spanking, where I bring out some of my favorite implements and give you my secrets for fulfilling your masochistic need without a dominant. In addition, I have a spanking tools list with a glossary of over 20 spanking implements from around the world and their uses as reference when planning your own scene. This content is only available on Patreon for a limited time, so follow the link in the video description below to access this incredible companion content now. Our first spanking style is self-spanking, and this is used as means of mental or emotional release and or sexual gratification when uncoupled from a top sadist or dominant. Again, if you want to watch that private patron-only video where I reveal my four secrets to sexy self-spankings, just follow the patron link in the video description below to access now. So as I discussed in that private patron-only video, self-spanking is for those of you currently uncoupled, and I know a lot of you who are currently uncoupled still like to engage in some of your kinky activities and play as much as you can on your own. So this video is definitely for you. But in addition, 
to self spanking if you are currently with a top sadist or dominant the next style of spanking is erotic spanking and this is used as means of foreplay to lead partners into a sexual scene so when it comes to erotic spanking its purpose is not to punish its purpose is not to administer pain it's heightened sensation it's what we're referring to when it comes to soft dominance yeah you still get submission but you don't have to yell be threatening be overtly aggressive same kind of principle applies here so as the giver don't underestimate the power of soft rubs on the skin before the swats between the swats a lot of just sensual touch on the booty on the thighs all of those intimate areas and that's part of the allure of an erotic spanking is you can rub your fingers up on some stuff and move some stuff around a little bit you know what i mean like as you're spanking as you're going along this process it should be erotic and arousing and pleasurable for both partners because for you as the giver your goal is to find that sweet spot in intensity between mood killing aggression where it's going to cause pain and snap your submissive or bottom out of that great headspace and then just like frustrating softness where it's too soft they can barely feel it and then it causes frustration you know what i mean so that's the sweet spot that you're looking for right in the middle of those two zones and i'm vehemently against any performative receiving but for you as the receiver if you just want to be more enthusiastic but are new to this don't know quite how to show how much you're enjoying this to show your enthusiasm for what your dominant is doing there are some great options for you really the point of this is to just show your pleasure this is about pleasure this is an erotic spanking so if you are across their lap this is an over the knee spanking then you can you know arch that booty up in the air and kind of hey look at me you can kind of grind against their lap a little bit show off your sex a little bit hey look how aroused i am all that kind of stuff again it's to convey to your partner hey you're doing something good pleasing that i enjoy here this is not to act in a way that's foreign to how you feel next spanking style is a role play spanking and this is used within a role play scene or age play setting but this can easily become an erotic spanking within the role play. So the key here for a role play spanking is you as the giver are guiding your submissive, your bottom through this role play and using the spanking as part of the role play. So you are going to adjust your speed, your intensity, all of the context surrounding your spanking needs to be adjusted and catered to the type of role play that you're doing for instance if it's an age play kind of role play right then you have your little all dressed up all cutesy right and it could be an over the knee spanking with you know the little skirt up over the knee spanking with your palm right that fits the context of an age play role play but if you are doing a role play scene that is a naughty student who didn't listen in class right well then you could probably use a ruler and bend them over a desk for a role play spanking so there's more flexibility and creativity in how you can administer spanking when it comes to role play simply because your role play is a role play it's going to be undefined until you actually do it and therefore the spanking is going to follow suit as well and for you as the receiver just respond in the role like the examples that i just used for the giver if this is more of an age play thing then maybe more whimpering and whining and apologetic little soft voice would be more fitting for your response versus a naughty student who is saying that they'll pay better attention in class or they'll do their homework etc you see how the spanking can actually fuel the role play that you want next type of spanking is a cathartic spanking and this is used as means of mental and emotional release and this can also easily become an erotic spanking once this release 
is obtained. And we saw that in this month's story, Catharsis. I wrote this story around this principle of the power of a cathartic spanking. So if you want some amazing ideas as to how to implement a cathartic spanking into your BDSM play, then go to my patron, check that out. You do not wanna miss that story. But for our purposes here today, you as the giver need to establish a very calm but assertive energy surrounding your spanking scene if it's a cathartic spanking. The energy that you need to create, the environment that you need to create is, this is for a release, a mental and emotional release. People cannot release their raw emotions and their raw thoughts and be totally vulnerable and expressive unless they feel safe. So your utmost responsibility as the giver in a cathartic spanking is to make sure that your bottom player, your submissive feels totally safe, not just physically, of course, but mentally and emotionally as well, to break the fuck down, to cry, to sob, to scream, to all of the above in any order they want. Okay, they need to be free and feel free to just express whatever comes up during the spanking. And the same thing is mirrored on the bottom side for you as the receiver. You should feel the utmost freedom and safety to kick your legs, scream, cry, whatever you need to do to get some emotion out, to process that emotion. And if in the back of your mind, submissives, bottoms, masochists, you are holding this shame, this embarrassment, this insecurity, this anxiety, this fear of judgment that you feel your partner is going to put on to you, you feel insecure about how your partner is going to think of you, you think your partner is going to judge you. you, you're all these things, that's in the back of your mind, that's a big red flag that you and your partner have not spent enough time going through that flow of intimacy, safety, trust, vulnerability, intimacy. So I would encourage you to backtrack. A cathartic spanking is not going to be a cathartic spanking if you are not able to have that moment of catharsis. So if that's where you're at, take time to build that deeper level of emotional intimacy first before you try a cathartic spanking. Now we're taking it up a notch this next one with a punishment spanking. And punishment spankings are used as means of addressing disobedience, reinforcing boundaries, and retraining negative behaviors within the consensual power exchange dynamic. Now, for you as the giver, do not do a punishment, punishment spanking, until you are completely confident that your submissive, bottom, mask is whatever, knows exactly why they're being punished, okay? It is your utmost responsibility as the top, as the dominant, as the sadist, who is going to be administering a punishment spanking to communicate clearly enough that your submissive knows exactly why they're being punished. So do not act out of uncontrolled anger by any means, but you have every right to be firm, aggressive, okay? And very much reiterate, this was the expectation and this is where you failed. This is the boundary and this was your violation. This is what I commanded, instructed, and this was your disobedience. And the purpose of this is to inflict physical pain to associate emotional pain for your submissive. Your submissive should feel, because of the punishment spanking, remorse emotionally. So if all you're doing is just beating them and there's not an actual engagement as to what they did wrong, why it negatively affected the dynamic and negatively affected you, it's not gonna do much. So that's your goal, is to really attach the physical pain to the emotional pain here and to obtain a recommitment to obedience going forward. And that's your job, submissive. When you are receiving a punishment spanking, receive it with humility, okay? Because if you knew the boundary and you knew what was expected of you and you willfully decided to do what you wanted, then what you did is put what you want before what your dominant wanted. And what your dominant wanted was a better connection for the relationship, a better intimate connection, a better sexual connection. So disobedience severs connection. 
So you as a submissive need to understand that, that if you are going through punishment spanking, this is your time to show remorse. This is your time to apologize. And this is your time to recommit yourself to being a good submissive, being obedient, being mindful, being respectful, doing what you know is required of you. And our final spanking style is sadistic spanking. And this is used as means of sadomasochistic pleasure for the top and or bottom player. Now there are four things that you need to be aware of when it comes to sadistic spanking that kind of set them apart from any of the other spanking styles that we discussed today. Sadistic spanking often requires the use of implements versus just your palm. Sadistic spanking often requires physically restricting the receiver due to the intensity of the pain. Sadistic spanking often uses other locations than the booty, such as thighs, upper back, and sadistic spanking often results in bruises, marks, or otherwise broken skin that can require days to fully heal. So, after reviewing those four points, this should peak your ears a little bit, that this is not for beginners. And as the giver here, you need to know what you're doing. You need to absolutely 100,000% know what you're doing. If you have never had any training, watched any video, spanked yourself, hit yourself, anything like that, if you never even held a whip in your hand, child, what makes you think that you're qualified to hold someone's trust in you. So givers of sadistic spankings, be aware of your limits. Come on, be humble and be aware of your limits and do not ever, 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 ever use an implement or strike a location of the body unless you are, again, 100,000% confident that you can do so without causing harm. There's a difference between pain and harm, okay? And if you are not 100% sure that you can use that implement or strike in that location of the body without causing harm, you need to back off and you need to get a little bit more education and a little bit more experience before you go down this path. And for the receiver, all of these spanking styles require consent, require limits and require a safe word, okay? Safe words always apply in BDSM, but especially if you are the bottom in a sadistic spanking scene, you must absolutely have a safe word my goodness again I believe they're non-negotiable like all the time all the time have a safe word I don't care if you're doing a non sexual scene I still want a safe word there okay more so here more so here when you are being bound when you have incredibly intense sensations or pain that's being administered it will only free you to enjoy the experience as a masochist if you know that I can say whatever I want to say, I can get as loud as I need to get, as vocal as I need to get, make whatever noises or sounds that I need to get, and just fully immerse myself into this experience and check out. That's the power of a safe word in a sadistic spanking scene. So it's very, very important. And again, if you as the bottom, as the submissive, have it in the back of your mind that you're not 100% sure that your top, your sadist, your dominant, can do this without causing harm. Pain is good, harm not so much. And if you are concerned about that, if you have genuine anxiety about that, genuine fear about that, red flag baby, I would back off and opt for an erotic or cathartic spanking instead, okay? Until you have that full sense of trust, safety, and security. Again, if you want access to any of the incredible limited time content I've created to help you navigate your own spanking scene, whether on your own or with a partner, just go to patreon.com slash alexerotica and check it out now.